elbow tendonitis. Do you have tendonitis in your elbow? And the thing about it is that you don't know you have it until you have it, and then it's a full on injury. It's something that you sort of feel, and most people say that it never goes away. And most of you know that tennis has been my thing for a few years, and it seems that the tougher the guys that play, the more I push, and the more improper technique gets exposed. And so guess what? I got tennis elbow. So in this video, I wanna break it down, how you probably got it, and what can be done. Now before we go on guys, let me know in the comments if you've ever had tendonitis, and what are some of the things that you did to get rid of it. Also, give the video a like. Now first, let's understand what tendonitis is. Tendonitis starts with micro tears. And micro tears go all the way from just a micro tear, which maybe takes a couple hours to a day to recover, to macro tears, meaning a lot bigger. That's like when you work out and the next day you wake up sore. Now tendonitis usually happens in a small area. So in this case, it could happen into the elbow. So in my case, it started with a couple bad backhands where I was just forcing a swing and I was hitting it improper and the vibration was being shot into that elbow and all the tension was being forced into that one spot, which then created micro trauma. But as the game goes on, that micro trauma got worse with macro trauma. And so by the end of the game, the elbow was sore. Now, if I play again the next day and I'm still sore in that one particular area and it's above being sore, like, ah, oh, yeah, I can kind of feel it. It's like, no, like I can't even pick up a coffee cup. Now you've created tendonitis. Okay, so tendonitis is a series of micro trauma that hasn't recovered properly and so that there's a current inflammation into that area. So that area has now become more than just small tears. There's bigger tears in there and there's also a lot of inflammation into the area. Now, long term of tendonitis, so you don't have to get tendonitis playing tennis. A lot of people get these injuries from being a grocery clerk or moving boxes, or people get carpal tunnel, which is an inflammation of the tendon sheath into the wrist due to typing, or they get it in the back of their wrists. So tendonitis can happen anywhere and you don't have to be playing sports to get it. It's just repeat micro trauma. It just, maybe the typing took longer to get. Whereas the elbow is something that was created by an immediate mechanism. And so the tendonitis, once it becomes inflamed and it becomes from sore to constantly inflamed, the constant inflammation turns it into a tendinopathy. That's where there's permanent changes into that tendon. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that the tendon is destroyed for the rest of the life, but it's just going to take longer to get it back to normal. So the phases of recovery is that we have to reduce from where we are and move it back down to a normal level. And so the first things that you need to do is you need to reduce, okay? So in the case of if it's tendonitis, the best thing you can do is reduce it. So if I wanna play tennis the next day, maybe I don't play a game where guys are really trying to put me into my weak spot and making me do these moves, which creates more inflammation into that elbow. Maybe the next day I go in, work on serves, or maybe the next day I go in and just hit with a buddy where we're not exposing, where I'm not you know, sprinting and hitting into a back position. I've reduced my gameplay. So in the case of you, if you've gotten tendonitis from working out, maybe you don't go in the next day and you lift as heavy as you normally do. You can do the same exercises that you would normally do. You just need to reduce the load. Perfect example is if you're using the lat pull down. So if the lat pull down or you've been practicing chin-ups and all of a sudden you've developed bicep tendonitis, then instead of doing chin-ups, maybe you stop doing chin-ups for that day and you go into just doing a lat pull down. Or if you're already doing lat pull downs, instead of doing the full stack, you go from full stack to half stack. Now you might not get the same pump, but you're still utilizing the tendon and the muscles in that area, which in all my videos I talk about, the body will find a way to recover itself. And the only way it's gonna recover itself is by natural blood flow. So you don't have to rest the area at this point, you need to reduce. Now, let's say you get into a point where there is inflammation, okay? So inflammation, now you're gonna combine rest and you're going to create a modification, okay? So if you have a back injury, 
okay? I obviously wouldn't do any type of loaded twisting mechanisms with the back, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't go body weight, which is a modification. The same thing with the lat pull down. So if we can't pull any weight because there's so much pain in that area, then we can either A, modify so that we're not utilizing that body part, or we can just go through the range of motion because again, the body's going to put blood flow into that area, which is going to naturally stimulate recovery. Now, if we're unable to pull our body weight, right? There's some times where your shoulder just cannot get above your head and even go in partial range, reaching up here, impossible. Even just trying to get that arm into that position is impossible. Then at this point, yes, we need to rest, okay? It doesn't mean that we rest the entire body. It just means that we rest this specific body part and get rid of that movement until we can recreate that movement. So if I have a shoulder injury or an elbow injury, doesn't mean that this arm doesn't get used. Doesn't mean that this lower body doesn't get used. That doesn't mean that this core cannot be used. You have 90% of the rest of your body that you can train. So you don't necessarily need to rest your entire body. We just need to rest that entire limb, okay? So in worst case scenario, we rest the area. If the area is able to move, okay, we try to move it by modifying and doing as much as we can. And if we can move with full range of motion, then we can reduce the load by doing 25% of what we would normally do, okay? Nowhere did I say stop working out. So whoever's telling you to stop working out, we need to reconsider are they having conversations with you daily about your progression? Are they seeing and knowing you from your previous abilities? And are they giving you modifications and advancements daily on what you're able to do? Because just because I have this elbow tendonitis, one day it could be really inflamed. But let's say I get in there, I massage it out, I ice it, I get a good eight, nine hours of sleep. The next day I wake up and I'm like, wow, it feels 50% better of what it was yesterday but it's only 50% of full capacity. So then if I rested, how am I going to stimulate healing faster? I won't. So I do need somebody to tell me, what can I do? And that's where a good coach steps in and says, okay, let's try this. Let's modify if we need to, or let's rest the area. And so I would tell you, those are the phases that you're gonna be able to recover this elbow tendonitis. Now, when it comes to supplements, the supplements are the same for any of the recovery. So A, let's make sure that your protein is high. B, let's make sure that we're not consuming inflammatory foods. So a lot of your fast foods, you know, even coffee creates an inflammation. How about pops? Like we know what we shouldn't eat, okay? Anything that came in a box, any of the processed crap, we need to get rid of it temporarily. I'm not saying you need to stop that forever, but if we really want to stimulate healing, we want to put only foods in the body that aren't creating a digestive problem that is going to slow the recovery of whatever injury that you have. So supplements that I would recommend to take is omega-3s. Omega-3s are shown to reduce the inflammation overall in the body. So I would tell you to have at least two omega-3s every single day. The Phytostack has omega-3s in it, but it also has a lot of things that are gonna help stimulate the healing process of the body. On top of that, the Flex Mode, which has glucosamine, chondritin, and MSN, some turmeric, it's got a bunch of anti-inflammatories, it's gonna help to reduce the symptoms so that you can get back to pain-free range of motion. And then last but not least, new to my repertoire, is collagen. Now specifically, I like the collagen that has the type two in it. Okay, so there's basically three types of collagen. There's more, but the three big ones are number one, the bovine skin, which is basically cowhide. So your body will take that collagen and it will use the collagen inside of it to help with the connective tissue, but it's more recognized into the skin. So anything where you see the bovine collagen is gonna be more directed towards skin repair and elasticity. When you see the uh, fish, the fish is the one that's going to add more, more liquid to the skin. So it's a little bit more plump. But the second one is the chicken cartilage. And it comes specifically from cartilage. 
So if you're looking to get into any type of joint or tendon, then you would need the type two. So when you see these complete collagens, they're not complete. Your body will take those, those peptides, it, uh, let me see. The body will take that collagen and it will use it for whatever it needs. But if we can get something that's a little bit more specific to the type of injury or the type of area that we want to develop and grow, then why not take it? Because it's already out there. And so those are the main supplements that I would tell you is to reduce your junk, to increase the amount of greens that you're taking in, to make sure your protein is high, get the flex mode in you with the glucosamine, chondritin and MSN, and then add collagen to your daily diet. So elbow tendonitis, yes, it does take time, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to stop working out, okay? So get that out of your mind first and foremost. But there are things that you can do, and they don't have to be very specific. You don't need a genius out there to give you some very specific range of motion exercise, this and that. The body will heal if you follow the steps that I told you, that first we reduce, then we modify, and then we rest the area. But try and minimize that rest and work your way into the modify. Don't modify forever. Try to progress into where you just reduce, and then we're gonna get you back to full health. So I know that is a bit of a rant, guys, but honestly, whatever your injuries are, however old you are, they are not limiting factors, and they are not forever. There's always an answer to any problem that you have, and I'm encouraging you in this video to always take action and move forward. So before you go on, guys, give the video a like. If you're sustaining any type of injury and you think that you need to take time off from the gym, then you need to reach out to us. Reach out to me personally. We'll have a discussion about how we can get you back to full health. If you're a non-member and maybe you're a little afraid from an injury that you had many years ago or recently, it doesn't matter, we'll start you on the five days. We're gonna start you where you are. Just go to our website, www.fitclub.fit. If you're looking to reduce body inflammation and you're looking to eat the right foods, then members, we have the belly burn challenge. So again, Go to the website, www.fitclub.fit, mention the belly burn, and we'll get you started today.